So why did I decide to buy and review this very, very low-end laptop? Well, I mean, look at that logo on the front. There's your friggin' answer. No, 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 seriously. It was because ever since it was released, it was surrounded by people with hate who would look at that processor and just say, that's terrible, that's awful, piece of junk, overpriced crap. I had to put this thing to the test as a video editor who actually does take full advantage of a CPU, RAM, as well as graphics when I use a computer. And I know from experience, a lot of people would be surprised how fast some computers can be despite having low-end specs. So to give this experiment the benefit of the doubt, I decided to get the lowest end model, the M3 processor, with 256 gigs of storage and 8 gigs of RAM. And that was also the only one I could afford to test. Now I use Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, Adobe Photoshop to make all of my such premium content. And you know, I have to say, usually when I buy an Apple product, typically I'm amazed by it and I fall in love with it. And then just after a few days of using it, I always feel like, how did I ever live without this? Now that's typically what happens with Apple purchases. But you know, with this MacBook, I just, it just, I just can't get to <laughs> I'm just messing with you. This is the freaking best thing ever. So let me start with design. Firstly, this is actually the first time I've ever owned a laptop myself, period. And what a good laptop to start with. It's literally the lightest laptop I've ever used or even seen. I mean, I realized it was so light that I could be like on my bed and holding it and using the trackpad and keyboard and it really wasn't that uncomfortable. I mean, yeah, you look ridiculous because no one ever does that, but that was a fun setup. I got my desktop OS, put Mac OS Sierra on it and I could lay down and use it. That's how light this thing is. It's like holding air. It's so portable. I can type on it like it's a tablet. That's how nice that full-size keyboard is by still remaining compact. Adding it in my backpack barely adds any weight at all. Its screen is smaller than my iPad, but the trackpad that it offers is so large it gives you a wide range of control. I just love that size decision they went with the trackpad. Also, the keys are the thinnest things I've ever typed on, despite like a touch screen. And I've never met a single person I handed it to who said, whoa, this is different. I might have to get used to this. Of course you do. But once you are used to it, you hate going back. It hooks you in. Now you don't want to stop. You go back to the old style keyboards and you're like, ugh. I don't know how, but it feels like I type faster with these keys and I have no clue how that works. Maybe because your fingers don't go down very far. I don't know. I love it though. And the multi-touch trackpad is very, very firm. It has tons of multi-touch tricks that I love about Mac OS as well as force clicking, which is really trippy. In fact, it doesn't physically click. It's a motor on the inside giving the illusion of a click. When the battery dies on the MacBook, the trackpad doesn't make a sound when you press it. How? And you can do things like turn off the sound of clicking. So it'll still feel like it's clicking, but there's just no more noise. Or you can feel the trackpad vibrate when you're scrolling through projects within Premiere. That's awesome. So it has a ton of really helpful features that hook you in so quickly into becoming something that just works seamlessly throughout the day. The other very underrated thing is how fast it charges. It comes with a USB-C to USB-C charger and kind of a block sided brick that's a lot bigger. But man, does that charge fast. Even when this thing is exporting a video, it can go from zero to a hundred in like a flat 90 minutes. Battery life is also not bad at all. Of course, when you're editing a video, battery goes down faster, but when you're casually doing stuff, it usually lasts six, seven hours on a daily basis. And during editing, it can go three to four hours. So it's not the best battery in the world, but it's definitely not average. It's a notch above average. It's actually about the exact same battery life of the Surface Pro 4 I just reviewed. All of these features are great on their own, but what this MacBook does best is complete the entire Apple ecosystem. For over a year now, I've owned an Apple Watch, an iPhone, and an iPad, and they all all work together to make this seamless great experience. And with the MacBook, I got the last piece of the puzzle that I didn't know I had with that very optimized desktop OS. I have an iMac, but it's so old it's losing out on a ton of features that I can't get. The MacBook is not some wannabe tablet hybrid that doesn't really know what it is. The design was completely intentional. It had a single vision. And what it wants to do, it gets right, which is be portable, user-friendly, and practical. So some of the things it does really well with its other kind Parts, continuity. When you're texting, it offers a handoff alert on your Mac if you need to switch over to a keyboard. Or if you're typing a document on pages, it does the same thing. So you can switch that document and move immediately to where you left off. Universal copy paste. So when I copy something on my iPad and hit paste on my MacBook, it brings that over from the tablet, which is really creepy and awesome. And most recently, they made it so you can unlock your MacBook with your Apple Watch. It'll just open up.
up and automatically log in. You don't need a password. As long as you got a pin code on here. All your messages, whether they be SMS text or iMessage, will also carry over onto your Mac. So please don't underestimate the idea of an ecosystem because it is extremely useful and you get so used to it, you don't know how you lived without it before. And I don't really see the competition trying to parallel that. Now, if of course you just judge computers by their gaming performance, then yes, this thing is trash. That's not the point of it. It's not about gaming. Don't ever buy a Mac if your purpose is to game. So yeah, in terms of gaming, this thing does like Minecraft, but what doesn't at this point? Other than that, don't bother. Don't buy this for video games. Now, of course, the big question I had for this was could it edit videos? Now, unfortunately, this ends the winning streak. Now, I'm very confident that the higher end 12 inch MacBooks, the M5, the M7 processors could edit 4K video in a multi-camera podcast because I have seen it done online. But just be advised, if you are going to get the slowest processor, the M3, you might have a harder time editing high-end stuff. That's 4K video or multi-camera projects in Premiere. And 4K video isn't impossible. I edited a Saturday short with it on the main channel, but I was basically editing blind. It was dropping so many frames, I essentially had to free render the whole thing and then edit it. So if that's your main goal, then no, this isn't worth the buy. Get something higher end. And that's not to say this thing can't edit videos. My basic tech videos like this one are filmed at 1080p at 60 frames a second. And those it could edit just fine. There's a couple frames dropped here and there, so it's not perfect, but it definitely worked and it exported fairly quickly. And also expect to pack an adapter with you during this time in technology years for when you need to use more than one port. And you know, everyone talks about how that's super annoying and it does sound super annoying. I thought it would be too, but honestly, I love the lightness of the MacBook so much that I've really gotten used to the idea of having a single port. With things like AirDrop and everything slowly growing towards a completely wireless environment, it makes sense to me that 90% of the time, we don't need 10 ports on our MacBook. But when you do need more ports for importing footage, hooking up an external display, just pop an adapter on there and you're good. It's really easy. Don't worry about it. So now, if this thing really isn't the best for video editing, which was what my goal was, why do I not at all want to send it back? It's not even as good as my 2012 iMac. And I can understand why people would call this the Apple Chromebook. Safari Book. There you go. That's a good name. Did you try that? Because the computer inside the MacBook is about the size of a phone. It has just as many ports as a phone. And it's super expensive at $1,300 because it has an Apple logo. Why do I want to keep this? I think it's because even though I bought it to see if it could edit videos, I slowly realized I loved everything else it can do. Because it does everything super well. Except gaming and like 4K video editing. Whatever. I, I made that obvious. They designed it so perfect. The weight, the keyboard, the fact that it matches all my other devices is really nice. And above all, it completes the Apple ecosystem by working with your other devices seamlessly. That experience of having all four devices, that is my Apple Watch, my iPhone, my iPad, and my MacBook, all know how to communicate with each other very well is really why I think it's $1,300. That experience has not been paralleled by competition. I was editing that review on my camera I'm using right now a couple videos back and I was editing it in Premiere and that was going great and I needed to show pictures of what this camera could do and Adobe Premiere isn't very nice at making Ken's Bird slideshow kind of things but my iPad is way more user friendly than Premiere with iMovie so I imported all of my images that I took with this camera onto the iPad made a quick slideshow in basically 60 seconds airdropped it to the MacBook and dragged it into the project and then I needed to compare the two cameras that I own and show the differences and since I was using both cameras cameras to show, I just filmed it with my iPhone and took that footage and airdropped it to the Mac. The fact that I could get so much footage together quickly and have a super customizable program work with a very user-friendly program, that's when I was like, I love this experience. What other hardware could I buy that would let me do all this stuff? So that's the bottom line. The MacBook is here to make a well-rounded Apple ecosystem. And unfortunately, I have to send it back so that I can review lots of other stuff for you guys. But I can say, after all the things I bought to review, this is the first thing I'm really going to miss a lot. Because dang, I love that experience of having all the devices work together. So that's the bottom line. If you're not an Apple sheep and you think it's overpriced, yeah, you're right. I doubt I change your mind. If you're into gaming, no, it's not for that. That's not the point of it. And if you're into the higher processor editing, 4K video, multicam, I'm gonna have to pay a little more. M5, M7 processor. So this is your Apple sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.